The moment they looked at my chart and the nurses looked at me and said, have you had a C-section before? I was like, yes. They were like, you can have a VBAC. We don't do VBACs here. You cannot have a vaginal birth after having a C-section. Oh my God. He's like, I'm not, I'm not waiting for your body to do nothing, okay? You're going to have this baby by C-section. And I was looking at this man like, but I don't, I don't want to have this baby by C-section. Like, the baby's okay. I'm okay. I don't have any medical reason for me to have a C-section. At some point, my heart rate went down. I literally wanted to cry because I was like, oh my God, I don't want this man to do a C-section. I don't want no C-section. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Natalie's Niche. If this is your first time watching my videos, welcome. I do a lot of encouragement and personal development videos. Today, we're going to be talking about my labor and delivery story. Okay guys, so I actually did not know that I never filmed this video for you guys. I was just literally getting back to going back to work on Monday. And I was like, I never told you guys the story of my labor and delivery. And so I'm gonna tell you guys all about it because I feel like every woman, pregnant woman, you know, whatever stage of womanhood you're in, this story is very important for us to understand and you know, learn from other people's experience so that when you get in that room, you go in there like a boss because you know from experience of other people how to handle this, okay? So if you're pregnant, sit back, relax, and enjoy because we're gonna have the tea the whole tea right now my story of my delivery literally started from you know me trying to figure out my birth plan and what I wanted to do because my first delivery was a c-section and the hospital I was actually trying to deliver at they don't support um, VBAC deliveries and so this was a big issue for me and I was actually, you know, talking to my gynecologist at the time and trying to figure out with him because he was a male, trying to figure out with him like if he would actually, you know, help me with my birth plan. But because the hospital itself really did not support VBACs, you know, vaginal births after C-sections, the doctor was really having a lot of pushbacks and I was about seven months at this point. And so in my mind i was like i know i really wanted to have a vaginal birth because the reason for me was because i know the healing process for me for my six section was really hard it was really tough i really had to be worrying about my stitching had the pain and while caring for my baby i really did not want that for my second baby and so i really really wanted to try i know a lot of people have pushbacks on both ends people are like oh vaginal birth versus c-section one thing that i want to really bring out here in this video as a disclaimer is make sure your birth plan goes hand in hand with what makes you the safest right if you know that you know the doctor have told you you know that there's a big side effect or there's something going on with you that you cannot have a baby vaginally honey it's okay you can still have your baby However, way, what matters is that mother is okay and baby is okay. Anyways, I knew I was healthy, the baby was healthy, there was no issues. My first C-section was more like an emergency that really did not have to happen. But anyways, that's a traumatic story that I really don't like sharing. But I wanted to share this, uh, my delivery story, because I feel like it's a positive experience and it's going to, you know, motivate and encourage mothers, pregnant women out there. But anyway, so I really, really wanted to have a vaginal birth. And so the doctor literally told me at 39 weeks, he was going to go in, open my belly and bring the baby out. He's like, I'm not, I'm not waiting for your body to do nothing. Okay. You are going to have this baby by C-section. And I was looking at this man like, but I don't, I don't want to have this baby by C-section. Like the baby's okay. I'm okay. I don't have any medical reason for me to have a C-section. Okay. One thing mothers or pregnant women need to learn from this video is to advocate for yourself. Advocate for yourself. Make sure you read up on these things, read articles, you know, find out things about these issues so that when the doctor is talking, he's not talking to a brick wall because you know what's going on. You understand your body. You understand your situation. You understand your plan. So technically at that point, I was praying to God because y'all already know I'm going to pray to God. I won't pray to my God. So I was praying and God told me, you have options. That's not the only gynecology doctor at that hospital. Ask people, talk to people, and figure out if there's somebody else that you can actually talk to to help you out. 
So I was actually talking randomly to a co-worker who was actually pregnant at the time and I asked her, who's your doctor? And she told me who her doctor was and that the doctor was a new doctor at the hospital. But um, this said doctor, which is a female, was actually, you know, inclusive of actually letting your body try. And if your body doesn't try, she'll then do a C-section. I was like, this is my sign, this is my sign. So I literally immediately booked an appointment with her. My doctor's office, because they're all linked together, literally called me and were like, are you firing us? Are you, what do you mean by this? Does this mean that you no longer want us? We would take you off our chart. I was like, hold on, I just want a second opinion. Am I not able to have a second opinion? It's my delivery, it's my baby, it's my body, you know? And so I went to the new doctor and the first consultation was just perfect. Like, she listened to me. Like, she sat down for 30 whole minutes, listened to my story, listened to my first birth experience and why I felt like it was, you know, wise enough for me to try at least for a vagina birth. And she was like, yeah, I'll let you try. I'll let you go all the way to 41 weeks. But at 41 weeks, if your body doesn't do nothing, then we'll do a C-section. I was like, yes, 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 yes. This is my girl, okay? And the beautiful thing about it is she was also a black African American doctor and I feel like I just connected with her on so many levels and just her listening to me like just hearing me out and I felt like that was something I never got from my first doctor he never really sat down and asked me my first story all he wanted to hear was oh it was a c-section okay 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 no we're cutting you open at 39 weeks anyways so that continued on I worked because I work at the hospital I work at the cardiac unit as a registered nurse so I was working up until the end of my I wanted to work to the last day because that's what I always do with all my kids with my son I work to the last day so I was working and I think um, this was November 30th I was due December 5th so November 30th um, I just went for my regular checkup because by that point we we're doing weekly checkups and so I went for my regular checkups I was actually on the floor but I, I just took excuse at work and I went to it was literally a toll you walk you know right to the doctor's office because everything's in the same hospital so I went to my doctor's office and she checked me and she was like girl you are four centimeters dilated like I'm about to admit you, okay? You're not going back to work, you're staying. And I looked at her, I was like, but I don't feel any pain, like, I'm okay, I'm, I'm fine. She was like, no girl, like, I feel like the baby's coming today. You need to get yourself together and come back to the hospital and let me admit you. I was like, well, I don't know about you, I'm gonna go back to work, finish my shift, and then come back to, to, to get admitted or whatever because from my first experience I will tell you I feel like sometimes we go to the hospital too early and you end up laboring for 30 hours 20 hours in the hospital the baby's not coming you're not getting as dilated so I had that experience with my first son with my first baby and I was like this baby until I feel like she's about to pop out. That's the minute I'm gonna to go to the hospital. I'm not gonna to go to the hospital and waste my time. So I went back to work, finished my shift. I told my husband what was happening already. So by the time I came home, we, you know, I took a nice shower, got myself together, and then I rolled and just walked to the hospital. We got into the hospital. When I got there, I really wasn't feeling any pain. Yeah, I was feeling contractions, but I feel like they were Braxton Hicks because every time I walked or moved around, it subsided so we went in and my doctor really wanted me to deliver when she was there because we talked about my birth plan and she understood that the, the hospital I was at they don't support VBACs they don't support vaginal births after c-section so she really wanted me to deliver the day she was there because she knew my plan okay so she was so excited she was like yeah come in so I went in around like 9 30 p.m. that day and but the problem was i wasn't dilating and my contractions weren't close enough so my doctor suggested i go home because she didn't want me to stay and then if i'm staying that long in the hospital they probably would just do a c-section so she advised me to go back home and you know labor at home and whenever i felt like it was right time to come back in i should come back in i was actually happy because 
I really did not want a November baby. Not that there's anything wrong with November, but I really wanted a December baby. So I was, I was happy. I was happy to go back home. And by the way, I was still scheduled for my last shift on December 1st. So I, the, the girl in me that likes money was like, I want to work. I want to work. I want to do my last shift. Okay, baby, you got to stay in there. So anyways, went back to work December 1st. Did my last shift. On my last shift, I remember I was walking up the stairs. I was doing any kind of cardio I, I, I could do. When I came home, I would walk on the treadmill. I would bounce on the ball. I felt like all those things really helped. So December 3rd in the morning, this was a Sunday, 2023. I woke up and I saw a text from my friend at 6 30. She always, you know, sent me prayer verses or, you know, about pregnancy. Shout out to you, honey. Shout out to you, IJ. I really appreciated that during my pregnancy. You know, she sent me a prayer and so I was reading the prayer and I noticed that I started feeling pain. I was like, okay, this pain's a little hot. Okay, it was it was coming slowly, slowly, slowly. And then it started coming, and I was like, okay, this is labor. I was yelling. I was like, oh, my God, babe. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, no. I was like, yep, this is the real pain. So I tried to take a shower, but I could not take a shower because as I was in there, when the pain came, ooh mothers in the house y'all know what i'm talking about it's like when the pain comes it's like you are no longer in this world okay that pain i can't even explain it it's like it comes slowly and then it turns and then it's like it's pulling you Ugh, the pain is not easy anyways then we got ready we got to the hospital around 9 30 a.m on that sunday so we got to the hospital mind you my doctor was not on call okay and the way the system of the hospital works you cannot just call my doctor because on weekends she's not available to come into the hospital apparently and so therefore the doctor that was there was one that did not support vbax okay so the minute i you know got in there i was in pain you know they checked me i was about six centimeters dilated the moment they looked at my chart and the nurses looked at me and said have you had a c-section before i was like yes they were like you can have a v-back we don't do v-backs here you cannot have a vaginal birth after having a c-section oh my god so 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 will not take this doctor so 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 will not take this and i was like Honey, this is my birth plan. I and my doctor have talked about this. Go call the doctor and I'll talk to him. So, I, mind you, I work at this hospital. I'm a nurse at this hospital, okay? So, the PIC team came and they were putting in my IVs. I know the PIC team because they come and help me all the time with, you know, IVs. The doctor literally bashed into the room and was like, Who do you think you are thinking you can have a vagina birth after a C-section? Who do you think you are? That I don't do that. I will not allow that. And I was, I was literally in pain and this man was yelling at me. I was like... Is this, is, is he okay? Like, I, I, I literally wanted to ask, are you okay? Like, are you okay yelling at me? And he was like, I don't do that. We don't do that in this hospital. Who told you you could? And I was like, so, so, and so. I and my doctor had this plan, and that is my birth plan. He's like, well, your doctor's not here. I'm here. So what I say goes. And I was like, no, honey. It's my body. I have the right to say what I want. And I told he's like, do you know you could die? There's fertility to you and the baby. Which is, this is the reason you need to read up and be on the same birth, birth plan with your partner. I and my husband, I spoke to him. We spoke to each other. We knew what we wanted for each other for our birth plan. So when he was talking, yelling, my husband was quiet. He let me talk. And I was like, this is my body. The only consent I give you is if anything's happening to me or the baby, yes, go ahead and do a C-section. But if everything's fine, I'm dilating well, do not touch me. Let me let me try. At least let me try. He was so pissed. He was he was like, the moment I see your heart rate down or your the baby's heart rate down, you are going for a C-section. So my nurse looked at me, he walked away, everybody was like, ooh. He is not playing with you. At this point, I literally started praying. I, I took my phone. I went on NSPPD. I went on a prayer line. And I was just praying. I was worshiping God. My nurse came to me. Oh, 
God bless that nurse. She is Leah. You are amazing. She came to me and she held my hand and she said, you can do this. You, If you want a vaginal birth after C-section, you can do it. She's like, it's possible. It's happened before. You know, my friends and coworkers have had that, you know, so it can happen for you. And that literally just motivated me. I was like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. She said, I can. I can do it. Literally, you know, started dilating. And at some point, my heart rate went down. I literally wanted to cry because I was like, oh my God, I don't want this man to do a C-section. I don't want no C-section. And my nurse ran in and she repositioned me and she was like, girl, reposition. I don't want him to see your heart rate low. Reposition. So I turned and she tucked me in nicely and my heart rate came back up. Everything went nice. Um, I dilated to 10 centimeters, you know, they broke my water, you know, my nurse was advocating for me. I felt like she was God sent, which, which is why it's important to pray about your delivery mothers. Pray, pray for the people around you, just so that if your doctors are not, you know, speaking up for you, your nurses can speak up for you, you know, to make sure there's somebody God sent that God can use to make your birth plan come to pass. So anyways, all of this was going on. And then the doctor came in with another doctor. And as they walked in, he was like, oh, it's time to push. I was, at this point, I was already tired. I was in pain. I was yelling. Yes, I took an epidural. Epidural, to be mindful, epidurals work. It's great. I, I will always take epidurals. They're lifesavers. But anyways, you still feel the pressure of the baby pushing out. So at this point, I was already tired. And so my nurse, Leah, she held my hand. She was like, girl, this is what you have waited for. You have prayed for this. You have wanted this all along. My husband was like, there, babe, babe, keep going, keep pushing. I was like, yeah, I kept pushing. And then all of a sudden, it, you know, I held my legs like this with my both arms and my nurse, you know, helped me push my leg back and my husband was on the side too. And then I pushed the baby out and I could feel the baby, the pressure just come out of me. It was like, poop, baby, baby was out. And I was yelling and the first thing I said, what God cannot do does not exist. And I was literally crying because I was like, the doctor did not believe God. You know, like, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to cry because this is just so joyful. It's just like remembering it just makes me aware that God is good and that the things that you want for yourself can actually happen. The birth experience you want for yourself can happen. If you trust in God, if you pray and just believe in what he wants for you, it will come to pass. So yes, we had our baby. It was a beautiful, positive experience of a vaginal birth after c-section um god bless my nurse my my recovery was smooth we, we were discharged the next day because i was great baby was great and after the baby came out guess what the doctor said he came all the way to the front after stitching me he was like you did good i'm proud of you 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 did what you said you were gonna do i'm proud of you i said no it wasn't me honey it was all God. It, it wasn't me, honey. It was all God. Okay? I, I can take no credit. It's God. Anyways, guys, I hope this motivates you to know that you can have the best experience of your dream. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in my next video, guys. Bye.